The fault. We believe that all men are created equal. The magnificent mosaic that is America. A radio beacon to radio beacon. I have a dream. Change has come to America. Believe me. Knock, knock. Who's there? Hey. That's a segment of your imagination. Randy Road Show. Turn up your mind. It's now a Category 3 hurricane. It's a major hurricane earlier today, now upgraded just moments ago by the National Hurricane Center to a Category 3. The storm continuing to intensify in the very warm waters here in the western Atlantic. Again, Cat 3 hurricane hunters are out there as we speak. You can see the storm has now formed a well-defined eye and again continuing to intensify. The moisture-laden environment continues across this area. Moisture. That upper level low that we've been talking about is now here down in Cuba. And that will steer the storm more toward Florida. It all depends on that high pressure system as we continue down the road. But here is the 2 p.m. advisory now from the National Hurricane Center. It is now a major hurricane, category three. Winds are 115 miles per hour. The other factor, the storm has slowed down quite a bit today. Yesterday and over the past couple of days, running at 10, 12, 13, even 14 miles per hour. Mm -hmm. Now Dorian is moving at a forward speed of 10. No, oh, no. And unfortunately, that forward speed is forecast to Re to be reduced even more. The storm no. is forecast to slow down quite a bit. More no. about that in just a second. Here's no. the storm as we head towards Sunday morning at 8 a.m. Still east of the oh Bahamas on Sunday, then moving toward Florida as we head toward Monday morning, oh. category four. You can't oh. see the icon there, but it's a category four. Winds at 140 miles per hour. The big concern, not only this hurricane coming our way, but how long it sticks around no. parts of South Florida, if indeed it does hit our area. No. It could be a prolonged period, no. maybe 24 to 36 hours of heavy rain, gusty winds and storm surge across the area. Then the storm continues to make landfall. Here we are Tuesday, 8 no. a.m. No. After that, perhaps going right up the spine of Florida in many respects like Hurricane Irma did two years ago. So again, here no. at 2 o'clock, Tiffany, the headline, we now have a major hurricane. Dorian now a Category 3. We'll have a new updated forecast from the Hurricane Center at 5 o'clock. And the hurricane hunters remain in the storm as we speak. Oh, for God's sake. Like I don't suffer enough over here. All right, so um, it's a sit and spin so far, right, is what it is. Those are the bad ones, the sits and spins. It just sits. Uh, so it slowed down, and that means that we were, <laughs> we were prepared to receive, to receive on Monday. Uh, the incoming has slowed probably Tuesday now, which means Tuesday, Wednesday, sit and spin, Thursday, maybe electricity restored, maybe, I don't know. So um, don't, uh, don't email us, don't, because uh, we won't have, we won't be able to, I can, our world in, uh, it, I'm in West Palm, everybody. I'm in freaking West Palm. See that? That's where we are, right? Freaking there is where we are. Uh, and so our world is about to get very, very small. Yeah, like uh, no electricity, no internets, uh, no television, uh, battery-operated radio, uh, tuned to I don't know what. Who's even on the radio anymore who will tell us anything? Who's even on the radio? I don't know. Uh, you better have the weather channel on that radio. I will tell you this. Uh, I did uh, Last night I was watching all my neighbors hammer in those uh, freaking hurricane shutters, you know, they're like uh, big aluminum, like uh, big sheets of al aluminum, you know, the stuff that uh, Trump likes to tax. Huh. And they were banging and knocking and doing and putting and ladders and all this. And I, I looked at them and I, they said, do you need some help, Rand? Do you want some help? Because they know uh, pretty much my ladder, you know, uh, my ladder goes to like the top of my pantry. So they said, do you want to borrow the ladder? What do you want to do? Blah, blah, blah. I said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to wait and see if Jim Cantori, all South Floridians know what I'm talking about. If Jim Cantori from the Weather Channel shows up in Palm Beach International Airport, and if he does, I will, I will uh, board. I will actually put the hurricane shutters up. Well, I saw on Twitter, Jim Cantori landed at Palm Beach International Airport. I put my uh, hurricane shutters up this morning. Okay, they're up. Oh, 
Yay, yay for us. Um, and, it, you know, like, look, yesterday was bad enough that I saw Leila Santiago. She did the car hurricane coverage for uh, Puerto Rico, which two years later, two years later, this is sick and sad. You know, Puerto Rico went for one year without electricity, pretty much. There are thousands of roads in uh, Puerto Rico that have never been rebuilt. They're still washed out completely. You have like a quarter of the population moved to Florida. I, I just feel so bad because this thing's it might go right up the coast from me to Orlando is about 300 miles you know so uh, they could have another uh, water event up there I don't know because it's a sit and spin but all I could tell you is uh, we'll be back as soon as there is connectivity but for right now this could be our last show for a very stinking long time the only saving grace okay is that we're not Puerto Rico even though I would say the same kind of uh, population speaks Spanish here that does in Puerto Rico. Yeah, I would say that. Uh, but we're a swing state, and Puerto Rico doesn't vote for president. And Trump has 11 properties here, so I have a little, a little more faith in the back end of what will get repaired and how soon and when, right? Then being in Puerto Rico where he doesn't give a damn if you live or die because you can't do anything for him, number one. What could you do for him? You can't vote for him. They don't vote for president over there. And number two, when he did go there, all he did, I mean, what's, what's, what's really memorable about the uh, Puerto Rico trip after Maria? Which, by the way, Maria, 140 mile an hour winds, which is what we're staring down right now. Same thing, except we're not an island. We're only a peninsula. <laughs> we're only surrounded by water on three sides. They were surrounded on all four sides. There's a land bridge. Maybe he can figure out the trucking situation where he could not in Puerto Rico. And the most memorable thing he did in Puerto Rico was throw paper towels. I mean, that was sick and sad and just disgusting. And he praised. Now he's trashing. You know, as this storm was, Dorian, what a stupid name for hurricane. And you know, it's a redo. They always tell you they don't use hurricane names more than once. Oh, yeah, they do. Dorian was a hurricane in 2013 headed for us. Uh, they just, uh, I, I swear, they're recycling. Which, depending on your attitude, is a good thing or a bad thing. I don't know. But, um, you know, it, this is all we'll remember him for in Puerto Rico. Uh, and also that he praised the governor who was run out of office, literally run out of office by his own freaking people because he was a dirty, dirty politician. Now Trump has been tweeting the whole time that Dorian was going uh, by Puerto Rico and was threatening Puerto Rico, he's saying, oh, when will it ever end? And, and uh, you know, these people, they have the most corrupt government ever and blah, 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 right? But then I remembered when he was sitting there with Melania and he was throwing the paper towels that day. I remember him sitting there with Governor Rossello and he was saying what a great, great government he runs and how Rossello is amazing. But I will say your current governor, he has done He's been amazing. Okay, could I just point out that when he says your current governor, meaning Puerto Rico, he's talking to Geraldo Rivera as if he only sees Geraldo at this moment as a Puerto Rican. Geraldo is not, you know, uh, he's not white enough for Donald Trump. You know, this is like when he talks to Jews and he says, uh, your prime minister, Bibi Netanyahu. Do you know what I mean? This dual loyalty thing runs deep inside this freak. But yeah, he's talking to Geraldo here, praising the governor. Say your current governor, he has done, he's been amazing. Say, yo, yo. Your congresswoman has been absolutely amazing. And the people, uh, I met your state senators and lots of other people, and they've been so thankful. And I think virtually every mayor has been so thankful. I've met many of them this morning. He loved them. He thought they were the best. And now he's saying they had the most... Cr of course, And the people, remember, Puerto Rico, they were out on the street protest and they drove this man to resignation. Remember, remember? Yeah, it's because two years later, there are some, still some parts of Puerto Rico... Well, some parts. 30,000 people in Puerto Rico. Okay, the island, I think, has 4 million people total. 30,000 people in Puerto Rico still have blue tarps as roofs. I hope that's a good look for you. I hope Americans like the blue tarp look because this is what we're about to look like.
all things Randy at RandyRhodes.com. Go, go for launch. Speaking truth to power, the Randy Rhodes Show. This guy climbed down a ravine, carried this guy up on his back under fire. Former Vice President Joe Biden retold the story of a heroic Navy captain during a campaign stop in New Hampshire last week. The general wanted me to pin the silver star on him. I got up there and stand. This is God's truth. My word is a Biden. Mm. He stood his attention. I went to pin him. I said, sir, I don't want the damn thing. Do not pin it on me, sir. Please, sir, do not do that. He died. He died. But according to the Washington Post, who spoke to more than a dozen military and campaign sources, Biden got the time period, the location, the heroic act, the type of medal, the military branch, and the rank of the recipient, as well as his own role in the ceremony, wrong. Biden's story appears to have some truthful elements. In 2011, Biden did award a medal to Army Staff Sergeant Chad Workman after the soldier tried to retrieve a dying comrade from a burning vehicle. Workman told the Post he felt Biden really understood his situation. But the soldier at the center of Biden's searing campaign story received the Medal of Honor from President Obama. What do you want to do about that? I thought I'd ask you. What do you want to do about that? Uh, Because, you know, I mean, I can sit on all these clips if that's what you prefer, or we could actually talk about them and figure out what to do together. It's up to you. But I thought I would ask you, what do you want to do about that? Because he, what, what happened here? And let me just say up front, his intent was not the same intent that Donald Trump has when Donald Trump bullcraps, okay? Donald Trump makes stuff up for the sake of hurting this country. Donald Trump makes stuff up for the sake of getting people to uh, go along with him with for his stupid ideas like, who's going to build the wall? Mexico, right? I mean, Donald Trump, his intent is to lie, bamboozle, con the American people. That is why Donald Trump lies. That is the reason Donald Trump makes crap up. That is what Donald Trump is all about. It's about you know, being a con man and not telling the truth because it benefits him to get you to buy in to an alternative universe that does not exist. Okay? Like, he'll stand on the stage and he'll say, I can't be racist because black unemployment is the lowest it's ever been. But the lie in that and the intent that he says that with is to defang any argument that Obama actually lowered African-American unemployment in this country by a full 10 percentage points that Donald Trump inherited an expanding, growing economy that was lifting all boats ever so slowly, yes, but lifting all boats, and that Donald Trump inherited that. And on Donald Trump's watch, another point was uh, taken off of African-American unemployment numbers, one point. So Obama lowered it by 10 Uh, Trump lowered it by one. The economy is now contracting. We just got the quarterly GDP. We only grew at 2%. Whatever happened to the 4% if he lowered taxes, right? Right, right. Okay. So I just want to say up front that Biden's gaffes or Biden's, uh, you know, exaggerations or his molding and melding three separate stories of heroism shown by military fighters which depending on who he's talking to he has said this happened in afghanistan i've heard this story before i've heard a lot of iterations of this story before okay one time the story took place in iraq one time the story took place in afghanistan uh one time uh you know he was he he's made himself the vice president now in the story Uh, In 2008, when he did actually go to the forward operating base in the uh, province that he said this happened in, he was a senator, not a vice president. Uh, Part of what he said was, oh, it was, oh, they were scared to let me go to the FOB. A FOB is a forward operating base, right? It's forward operating base, FOB, okay. 
Uh, so he said they, they, he, they didn't want, meaning the generals, didn't want him to go to a FOB, a forward operating base in Afghanistan. But he, in, the, in this version of the story, says, but you could lose a vice president. It's not that big of a deal. You could lose a vice president. But how many more of these guys could we afford to lose, right? Well, he wasn't vice president when he went to that province. He was a senator when he went to that province. He also said this guy was a Navy, and he repeats it, Navy, Navy officer. No, he was a, 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 an Army specialist. His name was Mild Fultz, and he was not an officer. And he actually braved Taliban fire to pull to safety a fellow soldier who had been shot in the jaw and in the neck. And Biden did not pin a medal on that particular heartbroken soldier. He was a staff sergeant, an army staff sergeant named Chad Workman. He did not pin anything on him. Uh, later, Chad Workman got a, uh, I believe he got a bronze star, which is what my dad got. So I know the difference between bronze and a silver star. And it's, you know, so that happened. Um, now, Joe Biden has suggested he was telling Chad Workman's story in New Hampshire, which is where he was when he did that. But none of the details matched what actually happened to Chad Workman. Biden has replied to this. He said, quote, I was making the point how courageous these people are, how incredible they are. This generation of warriors, these fallen angels we've lost. I don't know what the problem is. What is it that I said that is wrong? So you have to understand his intentions were not evil. They were not to bamboozle. I'm not even sure why he's going down nostalgia lane with regard to, you know, who got what medals and what uh, acts of bravery were performed in, uh, you know, these uh, ongoing wars that were still in, what, 19, 18 years later. I'm not sure. But the intent that, uh, you know, that, that Trump has to lie is not the same. I'm not experiencing Biden in the same way that I experience Donald Trump. But to say nothing would be wrong. It would be wrong because it, it just happened. It, it just did. So what can I tell you? I mean, it's up to you. I mean, everybody gets their own vote, right? You're going to get your own vote for uh, in the primaries. And I want you to fall in love in the primaries. I want you to pick who you think can beat Donald Trump, of course. And I want you to pick who you think uh, would be the best next president for whatever reason, you know, you have. Listen, my, 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 I want the next president to be as much like uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt as humanly possible. That's what I would like to see. I would like to see a new deal. I would like to see, you know, all the, the crap that Donald Trump, uh, you know, got rid of by, uh, you know, by, by executive fiat, overtime pay, OSHA regulations, enforcement of workplace safety, uh, the, the, the allowing uh, corporations to rope you into arbitration, keeping you from the courts if you are injured on the job. You know, all the crap that they do. He's rolled back all of these regulations that kept them from doing that. I would like to see a president who cares about these things. I would like to see a new deal for the United States of America. I would like to see investment in the United States. When I looked at the GDP, you know why the GDP is so low? Business investment down, way down in the United States. I thought if we gave a tax cut, they would be spending all this money here and we would get wages, woo, right through the roof, right? Call in, connect. Speak to Randy. Call 561-270-3844. 561-270-3844. I think the president's in a world of trouble. Uh, now his uh, polls are down to 40%, according to CNN. Down to 36%, uh, according to Associated Press. Uh, he's doing miserably in all of the uh, states, including Iowa, as you mentioned there. Uh, the, the farmers have turned on him. There's almost no one left. And wait till you get to the crash. After the market crashes, he's going to have no support at all. In fact, I'll predict right here for you, Chris. I think Donald Trump will leave office before his term is up. He'll be humiliated, embarrassed, and I know him. He's not going to want to lose, and he's going to run you for the You got hills. that bet all day long. One, I hope there is no market crash. I want a strong economy for this country, for me and my family. And no way. He's leaving. 
So that's what Cenk Uger, you know Cenk, right? Uh, Cenk used to work with me at uh, Air America, and then he went on to do a very successful uh, internet outfit, the Young Turks, right? No, everybody knows it. Uh, Cenk Uger was on with uh, Chris Cuomo last night, and he is predicting that Donald Trump will not run for president for a second term. Now, Anthony Scaramucci says the same thing, but Anthony Scaramucci is very, very specific. He says that Trump will drop out in March, in March. Now... Chris says he'll take that bet all day long. All day long he'll take that bet because there's no way this man is leaving. However, we still have to pick who do we want to be the Democratic nominee, whether they're running against Trump or they're running against Pence. Can you imagine that? Or some other candidate declares for the Republican nomination. I mean, yes, you have racist Joe Walsh, who's like, I'm sorry I was racist. I'm sorry. I mean, I I was a Tea Party freak, and uh, they were very racist, and I just wanted them to like me. I just wanted them to like me. Why don't you like—you really, really like me when I say racist thing. So you got him. You got Bill Weld, you know— uh, but uh, if another candidate sees a path and they declare uh, that they're going to primary Donald Trump, somebody with, you know, like a lot of money behind him, like a Mitt Romney, for instance, which is Howard's prediction. Everybody's making them except for me. Uh, you know, I don't know. But uh, it changes everything if you get a serious candidate, a serious person. Although Romney uh, has been so silent through so much of so much that he's kind of lost his credibility, you know what I'm saying? Because, uh, like you say, where were you? Where were you? First you said he was a fraud, he was a fake, he was a phony, and then you went and auditioned to be his Secretary of State at the Bedminster, and then, you know, he said, fine people in Charlottesville, you said nothing, and then he crashed the economy, and you said nothing, and you did nothing, you know what I mean? Uh, the whole time that this man was calling people rapists and murderers and everything else, you just sat there and you, uh, you know, rubber-stamped everything. So, you know... I don't know, but we need a candidate. We need somebody. And I would I would say we need somebody who doesn't get their facts wrong very often because Donald Trump does. And the people on the other side of this equation, not us, the friendlies, who understand a lot about the character of a Biden. And I, you know, I'm telling you, he, he has integrity um, as far as respect for the office of the presidency, respect for the three co-equal branches of government, respect, I mean, real respect for, uh, you know, the Constitution. I can't imagine that Biden would do any of the lawless things that Donald Trump is currently doing. Uh, I can't imagine the quality of the judges that Biden would pick uh, would be low uh, the way that they are with Donald Trump's judges or, you know, look, we're, we're about to go through a category four hurricane and it looks like we're bullseye, okay? Like where I'm sitting is like, bam. And, and I just want you to know, this, the studio is much closer to the ocean than my house. I don't live near the ocean. I'm not rich. I can't afford to live where I work. But here there's this commerce park and it's very affordable. And so we uh, took out some space. I share the office, okay? The, the front of our office is a medical supply business. Really nice uh, kids trying to do, you know, their own business. And they work really hard, and they're wonderful people, and I love them. Uh, and then in the middle, there was uh, an alarm company. And then we're in the back, and I have three rooms back here, okay? I got the room that Brett and Scotty sit in. Scotty has an office, and I live here in my studio, okay? This is where I do everything. And, you know, I, I'm so glad I took the window out, you know, where the TV screen is. Used to be a window. Remember that, everybody? Remember? And it had draperies, teal, teal draperies. Because, you know, it's dolphin country. <laughs> but honestly, I'm so glad the window's out, uh, you know, so I don't have to board that up. But uh, honest to God, we're like right in the bullseye. Okay. And we don't have a FEMA director because no one will work for this man. We have not even an acting FEMA director. We have an acting deputy FEMA director. That Brock dude that was in charge of the Maria, he resigned. He's gone. So we don't ha and he didn't replace. He didn't replace. So what I'm saying is I can't imagine, you know, our government working. Look, this is a sick thing. Our government is working to deport legal immigrants. Our government is spending all its time trying to figure out how to deport really sick children, how to deny active duty military naturalized citizens' children citizenship if they're born 
abroad while the naturalized legal immigrant is serving our country. That is what our government is spending all this time and effort and money on, is doing crap like that. I can't imagine that, you know, a Biden presidency would look anything like this. But we have to talk about what do you do when these kinds of things come up because the other side is going to say he's just as bad as Trump. They will. They'll say a lie is a lie is a lie. And he lied and he lied about the troops and he lied about this and he was a plagiarist and he did that and he's lying about this and he's like, and so if you can't trust Trump, so what? You can't trust Biden. That is going to be the deep, deep dilemma. So I just thought I'd ask you, Jeanette in Idaho. Hi, Randy. Hi, Jeanette. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. So, um, yeah, so my my answer to that question is what we do with Biden is we rebuke the corporate media's narrative that he's the most electable because I don't believe he is. You know, we've got the most popular candidate, um, the most popular politician, and Bernie Sanders, who I believe is absolutely the most electable. Um, he's got the strongest support he's got the excitement that can really bring out the base you know we don't we don't need another neoliberal centrist that's going to give us more of the same people want change and and i you know that's bernie sanders i think to me he's the one that i can trust to stand up you know to to the to corporate media like with his new um plan for journalism you know to you know big ag big pharma you know the monopolies i see bernie is not just the FDR of this century, but the Teddy Roosevelt of this century. Uh, yeah, well, you know, here's the problem with Bernie, and, uh, you know, we have to talk, right? So the problem with Bernie is he's not a Democrat, and they will play that same game. They will play the same game. That's why he's the most electable. I, I understand, well, I understand a, your point. I, I'm not arguing your point. I, I, I hear you. I feel you. I get what you're saying. What I'm saying is something different. I'm saying that the Democratic National Committee, which is still... Uh, responsible for uh, the way the convention is run and, you know, uh, uh, nominating and all that and, and which polls they'll accept. They've got their rules. They got blah, blah, blah. Right. Um, I remember one of the big things that the DNC was unhappy about was the fact that he's still an independent, but he uses the party to run for president. And I think we're going to have I don't have any problem with that. I mean, I think that's what people want. We want change, right? We need somebody who's not same old, same old. We need, we need new. And and to me, that's why he's the most electable. But wouldn't it be he an will easier get the independent vote? Okay, I, I hear you. I'm just, I'm not taking sides here. I want everybody to have their own free will here in this primary. You could do whatever, 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 right? I'm never going to tell you who to vote for in the primary. That would be just plain stupid and wrong because it's very personal now and you do get to fall in love. What I'm saying is something <laughs> different. Wouldn't you be better off with a change maker who is a Democrat? That's all. I'm just saying. I'm just asking. Don't get mad at me. This is the Randy Rhodes Show. To speak with Randy, dial 561-270-3844. That's 561-270-3844. All right, we're talking, we're talking. This is good, this is good. Don't get mad at me. I am not going to pick the winner of the Democratic primary. I will not do that. The only thing I might do is when it comes time for Florida to vote, maybe I'll tell you who I voted for. Uh, but I will not tell you uh, who to vote for in the primary. So just know that, all right? Spencer in Portland. Hey, sorry. I just got to challenge you real quick on saying that Joe Biden was a man of integrity. One, he's not a Democrat. He's a Republican with a D next to his name. Second of all, in 2001, this man endorsed that please get creative and find reasons to arrest people to shut down raves. I mean, he endorsed Strom Thurmond. That's all you need to know about the guy. I mean, I cannot vote for the guy. He's terrible. He shouldn't even be in the Republican Party. And that's, I mean, How do you that's, really I feel? I, so, like, who do you like and why? Honestly, I really like Bernie because he's a progressive. He's done a, I love his Green New Deal. I love his 
I love his um, criminal justice reform. I love the way his infrastructure bill. And not only that, but he can actually rally a lot of Trump voters behind him. A lot of them want Medicare for all. A lot of them want good jobs. What do you? And I think that he can really pull people together. Do you think that the tag of being um, an independent in the Democratic Party is going to, you know, play havoc in the Democratic Party nomination? Do you think that, uh, and also do you think the fact that he calls himself, you know, a democratic socialist, which is, you know, uh, what, uh, you know, Denmark is, uh, not what uh, Venezuela is, but do you think Americans are smart enough to know the difference? Okay, so I think you're going to have some people that just aren't going to vote for him no matter what. They're just Trump or Republican all the way, so you're not going to change your mind. But yeah, there's a lot of people that look at, like, Denmark. But but I have, have wait, wait, you just argued that. Republicans could vote for Bernie, and uh, that's going to— I'm saying there's there's a certain set that no matter what, you're never going to change their mind. But I do believe that there are certain independent, like mid-ranging and lower-class Republicans that will roll the dice on him as opposed to, like, say, a Biden or a Warren or a Trump. A lot of the people that went to Trump because they didn't want to roll the dice on Hillary, they're like, hey, maybe we'll get some of this. He can bring a lot of those people because a lot of people left. Because they best him over in the DNC and they got mad. So I think, you know, but yeah, I do think, well, you know, the Tom Perez and stuff like that, yeah, they're probably going to do everything they can to screw him over. If you look at the way the the polls are run, if you look at the way the media talks about him, yeah, I think it's got a lot of trouble. But I mean, I think if we really get behind him, you know, we can really do something good. We can really change the country. And that's not going to happen with Biden. A man who went to the billionaires and said, I'm not going to fundamentally change anything. And that's what we need is change. And we can do it. It doesn't matter if you're a Democrat or Republican. If everybody gets together and really pays attention and does it, yeah. So your, really your argument, can, hard. so your argument is that there are Trump supporters who voted for radical change and that they would vote for Bernie because Bernie represents radical change and that we should forget about the 30-something percent that will always support Donald Trump because of the racist, misogynist, sexist, you know, uh, xenophobic uh, crap. Just don't even pay attention to them and just, right? Well, I mean, you should still try it, but I'm just saying, I mean, that is a fact. But that still gives you 70% of people that would go to Bernie. Yeah, I hear That's you. still a winning majority. Yeah. And I just, I really think he's great, and I think if we put Biden well, in, I could tell. more of the Trump stuff. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I could hear how you really feel. All right, well, thank you for that. I appreciate the conversation. Thank you, okay. You have a great day. You too. Bye. I will. I'll have the great last two days of my life. <laughs> I better have some cute shoes. That's all I could say, because that's all that's going to be left behind. You know, that's what's going to happen. I'll be raptured up. Uh, Wayne in Oregon. Hi, Randy. Hi. Um, there's, I'm I'm uh, 76, so I'm up there in the same age range with uh, with Biden and, and a few others. Uh, and there's a problem that an author named Patrick McManus, who's a uh, humorous hunting and fishing uh, author, uh, and the, this problem with old men is leakage. Leakage. And, uh, leakage, yeah, we, we suffer from leakage. And what he was referring to was after we've spent a lifetime building up our stories and our tales, our tall tales that we tell all the other guys, occasionally we slip and the truth leaks out. Ah, and I think that may be Biden's problem right now. He's built his lifetime building these stories, and the truth is leaking out. So I think leakage may be his problem. I don't think it's an age thing, Wayne, because, listen, you know, you sound totally together to me. Obviously, I can't see you. I don't know what physical shape you're in. But yeah. I know 60-year-olds that live like 80-year-olds, and I know my mom is 89 yeah. years old, and she's sharp as a tack, right? So, I mean, it's not really about yeah. the age. And if it was, well, Bernie is a year older than Biden. He's 77, right? So you have yeah. Biden well, I, at 76, I, I Bernie at I, I 77. And and either of those in an eight, in an eight years or nine years they're going to be eighty five or eighty six. I'm not sure I want yeah. an eighty five, eighty six year old president. Uh, yeah, I hear you. The only button term. I want my mom's finger on is the alarm. You know, if she should fall. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. And yeah. and that's I'm thinking, you know, of the future. And uh, I'm personally an Elizabeth Warren devotee. I think she's. She and Ber- maybe Bernie for vice president or vice versa, because he could serve a term and get too old and age out and Elizabeth Warren could take over. That's I, an interesting you know, I, idea. Yeah. Yeah. So 
the only, I think Elizabeth Warren, to me, is the cream of the crop. She's because women age a lot better than men do. <laughs> That's not true. You know, for my whole life, oh. I always heard men get better looking and women just get old. <laughs> my whole life, well, I heard that. I, worked in, I spent 30 years working in medicine, so I... Uh, I, that's where I come by my opinion on okay. women aging better than, than men is uh, just 30 years of work in ERs and ICUs. So I oh, wow. had my share of that. All so, right. Well, when you said leakage, I went to the yeah. other end. So I'm glad that you yeah. cleared and clarified because that was a little <laughs> scary for me to even envision. Yeah. Well, thanks, Wayne. I yeah. appreciate you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Randy. You bye bet. Bye bye. All right. Len in New York. <laughs> Hi there. Hi, Len. Stay safe. Um, you know, we got it, Biden's, I mean, it's not age per se, but it is age that I think is doing this to him. I mean, he just doesn't seem as sharp as it did in 2008, where he was pretty sharp, but he still tripped a little here and there. Uh, well, and you it, know, he's always had a tendency to tell tall tales, okay? So... One of the kinder things that you could say about this, and this is what I said to Howard when I was watching the reporting on, you know, I read the Washington Post yesterday. I wanted to give him a chance to respond before I actually weighed in uh, because, you know, he has uh, he's got a chance to respond. And his response was kind of, what did I do wrong? I didn't do anything wrong. I, what did I get wrong? You know, and so I, then I thought, all right, the, what I said to Howard was our war stories like fish tales, meaning the more you tell the war story or the more you tell the fish story, the fish gets bigger and the fight gets longer. And it was, you know, this little minnow that you caught is now this giant sailfish, right? And you fought. Uh, the, other, the other tall story is that uh, he's the uh, best electable candidate. Well, that, And we have a bigger problem. Yeah. Um, because, you know, he's going to be standing next to Elizabeth Warren for the first time. And yeah. she's just getting sharper and sharper. And her, we've got a problem with her last debate in that she wanted an absolute getting rid of private health insurance. And you can see the polling for that is really, really not good. And there's a, an easy way for her to get out of it if anybody on this campaign is listening. Uh, you know, if they ask her about it again, I mean, I would say, well, look, you go for the what you're looking for in order to get what's possible. The world I'm looking for is a world where everybody transfers one by one company by one company, taking the public option to where we want Medicare for all, because everybody agrees that it's a public option. I'm not looking to get rid of health insurance immediately, and perhaps we never will, but we have to strive for the, for the objective of where we want to get to, and that includes having everyone in the country being who wants to, being able to get Medicare for all. If someone chooses that he'd rather spend a lot more money to be able to find some doctor who'll take it, that's okay. But she's got to come out like that, or they're going to just par her on that alone. Well, I guess we're going to know more, uh, you know, with the, the September 12th debate. Don't forget, though, that, you know, ha as I sit here and stare down this uh, monster of a hurricane, there's a climate... Some, you know, there will be uh, 10 town halls with t each of the candidates by themselves on CNN on Wednesday. Now, that's not the health care issue that you're discussing and it won't come up. But the climate plans will come up on Wednesday. And I, I you know, I was hoping that we would be back here to cover that. But I'm looking at it. and uh, There, that's not bad. Keep going. Yeah, let it go up there. Let it go. But don't forget, I mean, even if I'm not around uh, to watch the climate debate, all of them, uh, all 10. This has been your. Mary had a little man, man, man. The fault. We believe that all men are created equal. The magnificent mosaic that is America. A radio beacon to radio beacon. I have a dream. Change has come to America. Believe it. Knock, knock. Who's there? Hey! It's a segment of your imagination. Randy Rhodes Show. Turn up your mind. And the other thing we should do is we should challenge these students.
We should challenge students in these schools to have advanced placement programs in these schools. We have this notion that somehow if you're poor, you cannot do it. Poor kids are just as bright and just as talented as white kids. What? Wealthy kids, black kids, Asian kids. No, I really mean it, but think how we think about it. Oh, you should see Brett's face. <laughs> See, I never played that one. I, I, I've i got tons of them, but I never played that one because... Uh, that, honestly, that one, Randy, <laughs> that one hurt. That one, ooh, gut I punch. Saw it. I saw it. your face just uh, contorted into a... a, 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 a oh, oh, that hurt. Yeah, I saw that. That was like a gut punch. That was... So what do you want to do is what I'm asking you. It's, it's what I'm asking you because uh, this isn't going to stop. And again, I'm just going to reiterate... Biden's intentions are nowhere near the evil, con man, demagogic intentions that Donald Trump has when he lies. But if you are going to try to peel away, uh, you know, moderate Republicans, uh, then, you know, maybe you do want to Biden. But then again, Maybe they would say, well, they're both not honest, and so I'll just stick with, I don't know. I don't know how it would play. I'm not sure. I don't know. So I'm asking you is what I'm doing. Michelle in Alt- Altamont? <laughs> it's Michael in El Monte. Oh, El Monte. Okay. You came up. Yeah. How you yeah. doing? Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> there, there's one thing I think we all need to think about this coming nomination process, and that is... Democrats historically have not held together as a unit like the Republicans have. Oh, really? I'm I'm shocked. I have no idea. (laughs) Yeah. We need to nominate a candidate that is going to be able to work with Congress and get stuff done. And well, I, you know what? I, Here, here's a dirty little secret, okay? We only need four seats. Mm-hmm. If we win the presidency, we only need three Senate seats to take the Senate. So it's not that big of a road to hoe uh, that if you have a large turnout of Democratic voters, because we have a candidate that is so special and so in, in, invigorating and people are so enthusiastic, enthusiasm, right, that we could take the Senate. So let's just say that if we got a Democratic president, we would probably get a Democratic House and Senate, too. Well, of the candidates that are out there now, Bernie kind of scares me because he comes up with all kinds of rhetoric and all that kind of stuff, but not really a lot of solutions. But Warren, Elizabeth Warren, to me, is just a rocket ship. She's, she's going full blast, and I really appreciate her. I haven't made up my mind yet. You know, I'm, I'm still working on that. Yeah. But we need to think about also... On your local elections, we need to get rid of the Trumplicans all across local areas, too. Oh, well. my God. If, if people haven't learned the lesson about state and local. Uh, but I will say yeah. this. This is where Bernie and Elizabeth Warren are fabulous. They care about state and local. She, she also <laughs> has given a lot of money uh, to state and local races. So has he. He campaigns for state and local. I mean, we wouldn't have uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez if it weren't for Bernie. So let's just, you know, understand that those candidates, those two, are so committed to the state and local efforts as well as the federal efforts, the national efforts. And uh, so... They have that going for them. I don't know how active Biden is in the 50 state strategy. Okay. But I will say this what I've learned from uh, what happened to Howard Dean all those years ago, 15 years ago now, is a long time, was that, you know, Howard Dean was very uh, uh, motivated by state and local. He understood what state houses could do, he understood what governorships meant for people living in those states. He understood what it meant for OSHA. He understood what it meant for unions. He understood what it meant for health care. He understood, you know, as far as like expansion of Medicaid and the CHIP program and all that. But we picked the safe guy. That year we picked John Kerry. And John Kerry also was a decent guy in that he wasn't a liar. He wasn't a big storyteller. He, he wasn't operating with ill intent toward the United States at all. And they defeated him by calling him a flip-flopper. Remember? Yeah. Well, one of the things about Bernie that kind of bothers me is if he wins the nomination... The attack from the Republicans, the Trumpicans, could be horrible. But if he doesn't win, his followers are like a cult. Yeah. 
and it's going to be the same thing over again, you know. So, so wait, anyway, wait, you think I love that, you. And you think that the Bernie Bros, as they've been come to uh, be called, would sit home and not vote for the president in the age of uh, Trump, the way that they rejected Hillary? I think Bernie appeals to people that don't like the Democratic Party, as 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 it as it is, you know, and. I, I think that's a, one of the reasons why people wrote him in last time or didn't vote. Yeah, I, I do remember. But, I, I remember we launched the show in July of uh, the 2016, and mm-hmm. we already had a nominee, and it was Hillary. And I could not, I could not convince those Bernie voters uh, that they needed to get up and vote. I, I couldn't. And I, uh, the only argument I kept making, the one that I made over and over and over again, because I understood why people didn't like her. I understood the media uh, was, uh, you know, uh, just part and parcel of just smearing her. Uh, Comey was no help, right? We had a lot of things working against us, the emails, the WikiLeaks, the, you know, whole thing. It was bad. But I kept telling people, one is a fascist. And the other one isn't. Please get up and vote. And they wouldn't. They didn't. Yeah. So that's yeah. Well, that's a little. Happy dark. Friday. Thank you. Bounce your boobies. Uh, bye bye. Bye. Oh, Rusty Warren is uh, ill on my Facebook page, my personal Facebook page, not the Randy Roadshow page, but you know I have another one that's personal. Um, on that page, there's a little uh, something there asking you uh, to you know help her out a little bit uh, rusty warren is getting up there and she's had a bout with uh, some medical issues and uh, she's the person who sings bounce your boobies and and i you know i don't even know if you know this but that song when she recorded that song do you know who her audience was it's like 50 years ago maybe more her audience were uh guys she was talking to men she was singing to men who um, at that time we used to call them cross-dressers. But they were basically, you know, um, they, they, they were drag queens and they had, uh, you know, seeds in their bra to make the boobs. You know, the bird seed is very, uh, it's, it's nice. It feels, uh, you know, you put that in pantyhose. Yes, I know all about that. Uh, and so she was encouraging them to feel it, you know, to feel feminine. And that's who she was singing about your boobies to. So she's a little gift. She's just a little gift. Andy in Minnesota. Hey, Randy. Hey. I'll, I'll never look at bird seed the same. <laughs> it, it feels really think, good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, I, I don't think, uh, you know, I think, I don't think Biden's heart is in this thing. And I, I just think somehow the DNC got him to run. And, uh, you know, I think he was, you know, obliged to run for them. And I, I just don't think he wants to really do it. I mean, you can tell when people, when their heart is really in it. If you look at, like, Elizabeth Warren, I mean, she's just on fire. Well, she's very energetic. I mean, the woman is is, is indefatigable, I believe, is the right word for her. However, Biden, I believe, is being sparsely put in front of audiences. And it's likely because of what Wayne said was leakage. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yes. Right. I agree. Yeah. So I, I don't know well, that I I, I don't know there. that I would assign the um, he doesn't want to run thing. He's just been talked into it. Conspiracy, you know, um, for the DNC. I don't know that I would say that. Yeah. I, I don't know that I would go there. But I would. I. I mean, right. who who really in his position who wouldn't want to be the president of the United States, especially after this president? Because all you got to do is the right thing like three out of four days a week and you're a hero so, you know so but they are parsing him out all things randy at randy go, go for launch speaking truth to power the randy Rhodes show I watched what happened when the kids from Parkland marched up to, and I, 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 I met with them, and then they went off to up on the hill when I was vice president, and they went off the hill to go into those neighborhoods. All those congressmen were like, no, I'm not here. I'm not here. I, I don't, don't, don't tell them I'm around. Yeah, well, you weren't vice president when Parkland happened, so you were out of office. I'm just saying, I don't know. You know, look, 
we're up against a lot. We're up against an enormous amount of crap. We got an entire, we have entire uh, radio, all of AM radio, okay? All of it. Thousands and thousands and thousands of hours of conservative swill, okay, on the AM dial. Then you got thousands and thousands and thousands of hours on the the phone news station, uh, uh, Fox News, a vowel movement away from what it actually does to the news. And then you have this whole internet troll system. You've got Facebook and the troll system there. We're up against so much. And you know, you know that Republicans are not exactly discerning the 30% that will stick with Trump. The caller is correct that you shouldn't worry about them. I just asked him the question to see if he could defend his position. But the truth is, don't worry about the 33, 37% that still support Donald Trump, that are only voting for Donald Trump because he is sufficiently racist enough for them. Those people will never, ever see the light. They will never see America as the great experiment. They will never see e pluribus unum as the motto of this country, which it is. They think that, you know, in God we trust, which was put on our dollar bills in 1954, it somehow goes back to the founding fathers. So forget them. They're they're just not discerning enough. They're just not uh, uh, so full of care for this country and uh, the great experiment that is our Republican democracy. Uh, it's, a, it's a democratic republic is what we are. Representative republic, whatever you want to call it, okay? They don't care about it. They don't like it. They've never read the Constitution. They only know the uh, a portion, not even the whole. They only know a portion, the second half of the Second Amendment, which says a well-regulated militia being necessary for the preservation of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. They don't understand we have a National Guard. They don't understand that we don't need to have a militia to preserve the free states that, you know, whatever it is. Okay, they don't care. What they're going to say, what they're going to say is what Donald Trump says. And Donald Trump is going to call him Sleepy Joe. Donald Trump is going to make this man who is merely three years older than him That's it. That's the age difference. Three years older than him into some old leaky guy. Thank you, Wayne. He just gave me the greatest adjective ever. But that's what he's going to say. Joe Biden, you know, he doesn't have it anymore. He's incompetent. He lost his fastball. Joe Biden says you have more in common with George Wallace than George Washington. Well, you know, Joe is a pretty incompetent guy. I've watched his interviews. I've watched what he said and how he said it. And I wouldn't have rated him very high in the first place. But Joe Biden has truly lost his fastball, that I can tell you. you. (laughs) (laughs) Look at the top of his head. (laughs) That America would vote for that. I mean, it's just unbelievable. So this is what we're up against. And so... You know, we have to put some thought, or you do, into who can really beat Donald Trump. And there are two sides to this argument. And one side is that the farmers, who are basically very conservative people, uh, the farmers uh, have sort of peeled off. They're losing faith in, uh, you know, uh, Donald Trump's trade war. Uh, they aren't voting for Donald Trump again. His father, Frank, has been farming here for 70 years, and his uncle Tom is a 60-year farming veteran. All three of them voted for Barack Obama twice for president. But three Novembers ago, they were among the many Pennsylvanians who helped decide a presidential election. Frank, who did you vote for for president in 2016? Mr. Trump. Right? Trump. Mr. Trump. If the election were today, Frank, would you vote for Donald Trump? No way. Couldn't happen. No. See what I mean? So there's the argument that Biden appeals to guys like that because he was Barack Obama's vice president, number one. Number two, they're done with Trump. And number three, he's not radical. He doesn't have, I don't even know what his ideas are. I, I, do, do you? I mean, I have no idea what his ideas are. What are his ideas on trade? I, I, he put out a health care plan, which is to build on Obamacare. But I mean, uh, so th- that's one side of the argument. The other side of the argument is 
that Donald Trump is going to bash this guy in the head as being low energy, as being leaky, as losing his fastball. Uh, the, 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 a lot of people are going to stand there and say there's no difference between the two of them because they both lie and they'll just equate Biden's gaffes with absolute abject in, you know, malintent lying. So this is what you're going to have to figure out. Colleen on Long Island. Oh, yes. Hi. Here I am in Central Mauritius, the Trump land of the world. Ah, yes, yes. <laughs> I, uh, I'm i still torn between Elizabeth and, and Bernie. And, you know, they have such good policies that they've delineated so well and clearly. But um, Biden, as much as I like him, and I think he's a very good person, I don't think that he's going to be able to uh, get into a, a, you know, a fist fight, if you will, with, with Trump. Um, But I also wanted to make a comment on immigration, which was uh, what Trump doesn't realize is as long as people want to come to this country, we're in like a number one place. And as soon as you make this a country that people don't want to come to, we're doomed. Yeah, you're right. No, it's because that that's the reason we we have such a strong country, because of the, uh, the, the diversity and all the different ideas. And I have three grandparents born in another country. And, um, you know, they came here because they wanted to make a new life and a better life than what they had in Europe. Yeah. And it's just kind of shocking that all of a sudden immigration has been turned into a bad thing. Yeah. And, 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 you know, it's really, you know, uh, what really incenses me is he's going after naturalized citizens, legal immigrants. He's going after, you know, for for lack of a better, uh, you know, example, your grandparents, my grandparents. He's literally... He's literally saying uh, that even though they've been naturalized, that their children, if they were born, you know, uh, uh, while they were, you know, serving in World War II, uh, 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 that they're, yeah, well, they don't count. Are they going to send my mother back to Italy? Right. That's the whole that's that's kind of what he's because, doing to these, uh, because, these soldiers, you know, their children. It's just he's he's a you know, he's a very uh, uh, nasty guy, but he understands that his base or as I like to call them, Al Qaeda hates and he feeds that hate. So what I'm saying. There's no comparison between Joe Biden and the stories he tells. Like, you know, like I said, you know, war stories can be they shouldn't be especially from the former vice president of the United States who's campaigning for the presidency of the United States. They shouldn't be fishtails, do you know? They shouldn't be, but it's not the same. Clear for takeoff. Randy Rhodes, Air Force. Air Air Force. RandyRhodes.com. Call in, connect. To speak to Randy, call 561-270-3844. 561-270-3844. She's low energy. She actually is low energy. She'll go home, she'll take a nap for four or five hours, and she'll come back. No naps for Trump. No nap. I don't take naps. We don't have time. Man golfs like uh, more than anybody. Remember when he said, you know, he was running for president, he would never play golf because he would be too big. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is what I'm saying. The lies that, uh, you know, he tells the intention is to bamboozle you. The intention is to, you know, snowball people. It's it's obviously to, uh, you know, uh, uh, create uh, an environment that doesn't really exist except in his head. Uh, but that low energy stuff, he said it about uh, Hillary, he said it about Ben Carson, he said it about Jeb Bush. He's going to play that game with, uh, you know, whoever our candidate is. He's going to say that. He's going to say, uh, but the lying thing, that's, 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 look, I'm not calling, you know, Biden a liar. I am saying he has a problem with fact management where, oh, I don't know, let's just say Buttigieg doesn't. Let's just say Kamala, the prosecutor, doesn't get her facts wrong you know, very much. Let's just say that Elizabeth Warren has her head wrapped around the facts. Uh, Bernie, too, he understands exactly how you know uh, wealth is transferred in this country through this crazy tax code of ours, and that every time we have a Republican president, they crash our economy, they run up deficits, they, uh, production goes down, uh, wages stay stagnant, uh, you know, and the rich get richer. Every 
every single time. So, I don't know. Got a dilemma. David in Connecticut. Hey, Randy. Hey. Uh, it's, it's hard to get a hold of you, but I persisted. She, he persisted. Yay. <laughs> yeah, it's an honor to speak to you, and I, I believe you're, you're sitting in a seat of power, and you're using it very, very well. Thank you. Yeah, your journalistic power to, to try to reach these people that need to be more well-informed. But the reason why I called, Randy, is that I want to take up on this Bernie Elizabeth uh, Joe Biden debate a little bit. The gentleman said earlier that, uh, you know, uh, I don't know about Bernie. You know, he's uh, he's got a lot of ideas and rhetoric. And I'm thinking, gee, you got to come a little bit harder than that. You know, uh, if you're gonna, if you really want to debate about Bernie, but uh, if, if, if this electability thing, if Bernie or Elizabeth got on the stage with Trump, they would literally eviscerate him. I'm not worried about either one of them. You know, worrying about lobs of low energy or whatever, that, whatever he's going to throw at them, they would eviscerate him, and that's what I'm hoping for. Joe Biden uh, is a, is a huge mistake in my mind. He he has less electability. He is basically a Wall Street uh, incrementalist who uh, goes back to the D Democratic Leadership Council, the New Democrats, the New Republicans, uh, the DLC, right? the Democratic Leadership uh, Committee. Council. Council. Committee, yeah, whatever. The DLC. Uh, when, when the, when the, when the uh, Democratic Party went more corporate. They got well, a, now they call themselves the third way. And it's the same people. It's exactly right. the same people. Okay. And that's who Biden is. And we can't go that way again, Randy. You know, listen, I'm a Bernie guy. I'm not a Bernie bro. And I can't stand the Clintons because of what they did to our agenda when Bill was in office. I mean, it just blew our agenda from, from that point on. And, and I... I, I, but I went out and I did my duty, Randy. I voted for her because, like you say, I, I did I too. I, I voted for her too. Yeah, not not too. in the primary. Is, in the primary, I voted for Bernie. Yeah, and I'm going to vote for him again. And, I'm, and I'm in not the a Bernie, general, I voted for Hillary, and yeah. I begged people to save us from what obviously you know yeah. he was, and yeah. they wouldn't do it. And a lot of that Bernie bro stuff is is really overdone, Randy. It, you know, it's it's part of the whole negativity against Bernie trip, and this is this is one of the reasons why I wanted to call you. I know you have experience in the billionaire media, and and thank God you're not there anymore. Um, but you know, I've, I've been monitoring like uh, Republican Light, MSNBC, and uh, you know, to, for them to mention Bernie's name, you think their tongue would burn. Uh, they're setting it up right now the way I see it, uh, Randy. Is Elizabeth? They mentioned Elizabeth Warren a lot in terms of an alternative to Joe Biden. That's the way they're setting it up right now. There's no doubt in my mind. And Bernie's not even part of the conversation. And to Bernie to get on MSNBC or even have his name mentioned, uh, the billionaire media does not want this man because he's a direct uh, contradiction. Uh, he's a revolutionist, and, and I we need this. And in, in, in all reality, Randy, what I believe. I believe this. Bernie is our last best hope. We are standing on the precipice of international disaster. And, I, and, and incrementalism is not going to do it. Wall Street incrementalism, sticking it in the neck of the working class like the Democratic Party's been doing, uh, and, 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 and also the working class. Well, this is what I worry about, okay? This is what I worry oh, tell about. Tell me what you worry about. Okay, so I worry about that, too. I worry about this idea that, you know, uh, Biden is more appealing to farmers who have bailed from Trump because they voted for yeah. Obama before and he yeah. was the vice president and a lot of respect is paid. And, and that's great. I get it. Yeah. Uh, but I worry about the incrementalism, too, because because yeah. we will lose in the midterms of the first year of a Democratic presidency. They're unless, setting us up to lose, Randy. Uh, we, with Biden, they're setting because us up people to lose. Because people, pe people will it's say... People will say... very clear, Randy. People will say they're, they're all the same. They no, will. No, no, they're, they're not. But let me just lay this No, on. I mean, if we elect a third-way sort of a Democrat, okay, a yeah. corporate Democrat, uh, then nothing really major will... Oh, I see what you're saying. Yes, and you're people saying. will say... See, the Republicans and the Democrats, they're both the same, but at least right. Trump was entertaining. Right. I could hear it. We can't it. do that anymore. It's, it's, we're at a, we're on, like I said, we're on the precipice of, of, of international disaster. And everybody knows it. If you don't know it and you, and you're, and you can't see it or you don't want to see it, you've got to wake up. Uh, but let me lay this on you, Randy. I saw some statistics that uh, 
basically at the 50 age, 50 year old age line. I saw it too. So those over 50, they're for Biden, and the cat, you know, they're for the capitalist candidate. Those below 50 are for Warren and Sanders, and it's basically a 50 50 split right now. I saw between it between people who are leaning towards socialism and people who like capitalism, and I'm extremely, extremely encouraged by that. That's real stuff, Randy. Well, it is real. real. I've huh? seen it too. I've seen the exact, uh, you yeah. know, stat that you're talking about. Yeah. But yeah. I'll do, let you go. I was going to ask you. Program doing a great job. Oh yeah, yeah. But do people under 50 actually show up? Because older people who are used to voting every in every election, there. You know, listen. There are people here. You know, this is a big uh, senior community, and I'm very aware of it now because you know we're having a big hurricane. And, you know, my mom, my mom's friends, they can't ride this thing out alone, right? So, but I'm just saying there's a very big senior citizen uh, community here in Florida, especially South Florida. They all vote. They vote for mayor. They vote for the state legislature. They vote for the sheriff. They vote for, um, obviously, they're going to vote in the primary, and they vote for the presidency, obviously. Obviously, they do. I just worry that young people are going to get stuck in this idea that they didn't get what they wanted out of the primary again, and so here we go again. You see what I mean? I see that stat too, but that stat sends shivers down my spine. But it's very important that you pick the right person for you and your situation as you assess it in the primary. This is the Randy Rhodes Show. To speak with Randy, dial 561-270-3844. That's 561-270-3844. Bush is failing. He's a very nice person. Highly low on energy. He really is. He's low. He's low. He's low on energy. But he's a nice person. By the way, Carson is super low. I don't understand the whole deal. I don't know what's going on. Carson is lower energy than Bush. I don't understand what's going on. And he picked him for his housing and urban development secretary. You see what I mean? The the intention is so evil. It's so ugly. Uh, So this obviously cannot go on. Oh, and by the way, here's a little nugget for you. Uh, one of Trump's appointees who was uh, appointed to the D.C. Circuit, uh, the D.C. District Court, um, he had the Trump tax return case in front of him, the one that, uh, you know, uh, Richard Neal, the House Ways and Means Committee chair, uh, under the 1924 law that says that if the House Ways and Means chair should request anybody's tax returns they shall be provided the judge says it's too confusing an issue and uh i'm gonna delay uh any any uh judgment i'm going to let it go to trial just to slow it all down that's a trump appointee i mean we can't be in any worse shape than we already are we just can't be sam in florida hello hello Yes, um, I've been voting Republican since uh, Reagan was I'm first sorry. term, and I've noticed since uh, Carter was in office that the Democratic Party has pretty much brought the country to uh, either a battle overseas or Carter economic. Did? Carter had the Iran Contra nonsense. Now that would be Ronald Reagan. That was Reagan. Yes. Oh, I'm mistaken. Yes, you are. I thought I thought it was no. Uh, I thought it was Carter because no, um, it was Ronald Reagan who said on the TV after he got no. after he got caught. He said, and this was the best lie I ever heard in my life. Really, this is a very very good one. He said that his heart told him that he didn't sell tow missiles to the Iranians, but the facts <laughs> tell him that he did. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. All right then, uh, Richard in Chicago. <laughs> Hi, Randy. How Hello. are you doing? I'm fine. How? That's good. I am calling because I was listening to the show, enjoying my herky jerky, <laughs> and I bought and I bought every one except for the bacon. <laughs> and Randy, I'm I'm struggling. Me and my brother are struggling to eat it. I mean, it is so good. 
I okay. like the sticks. So, I really do. I like the bite like on the sticks. sticks. And they're great for hurricanes, i got to say. Yeah. So. Yeah. And, and I missed the, the first 30 minutes of your show. Oh. But you know I subscribe to your podcast. Okay, good. So buy a sticky podcast. So okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to catch up later tonight. Mm. But the nature of my call is this. Yeah. I called you back in 2016 with regards to Bernie Sanders. And I told you then. What I'm about to tell you now, and what Bernie supporters refuse to say, Bernie has a problem with African Americans. He had a problem with them in 2016. He's going to have a problem now. Well, isn't and, isn't his campaign manager an African American woman? Yes, he is. But but that's irrelevant. I mean, I I, I don't see how relevant that is. Well, he, because still, because she actually informs him, you know, uh, about the issues that are important to your community. And, and she may have, but uh, still, why do why do you, why do you up against, why do you think that? Mm -hmm, why okay. why do you think that? Because I, he's from I, I think, because he's from very 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 white Vermont. Uh, that could be a factor. I think so. No, and no, it's not. It could be. It's not a could be. It is a fact. That that's one of the factors. But you know, he that, really that he really was as a young man. First of all, he hasn't changed all that much in all these years. And he right. was a one of the original civil rights uh, marchers. I mean, he 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 was out there early. You know, I I, I, don't, I I don't. I remember. Okay, so what is it that makes you say that? I, I, because of the simple fact that those. Same, those same supporters who who said why African Americans are refusing to support Bernie, and and I remember it clearly one individual was on your show, was on several shows, uh, stating that all of us, all African Americans, have Stockholm syndrome, meaning that what that yes, on my show on my show you think I yes. would have allowed that on my show. I think you allowed the individual to say that, and you challenged so it. So it was a caller. It was a caller. It was a caller. Okay, what you're implying no, no, is... No, not again. Yes, not, well, that's what you're implying again. to this audience who you know may or may not know all, the whole history of, of, of you know my broadcast years. There is no way right. I would entertain somebody who said that. You didn't. Right. And you didn't. And you, quick, and you quickly uh, eviscerated that, that person. Okay, so but what's the I, point I, in bringing him up as a reason for you to say because, that Bernie doesn't like to, or care about? Because I feel like I feel like everything is 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 is, is replaying itself. It's it's like I, I I see it coming that if Bernie does not do well in getting the nomination, yeah, I for I see it coming. What? What? What is coming? Reacting. What is coming besides that, for this big ass hurricane? What is coming? <laughs> which, which I pray you guys be safe. Thank you. I appreciate that. I need that. Yes, dear. Hey, Randy. Yeah. I just, I just real quick, I want to say just to kind of counter his point. Uh -huh. uh, uh, Killer Mike, who is a, a very huge uh, uh, black rapper, is a huge Bernie support supporter, and so is Cardi B, who's one of the biggest rap artists right now in the country. Another, you know what I mean? So that. That doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't make sense. No. I mean, the hip-hop community is getting behind this old white guy. Sugar Hill. Yes, there you go. Very good. <laughs> Sugar Hill gang. I want that hip-hop song. Hip-hop. Yeah. We had that conversation yesterday. Me and, uh, me, 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 me and white boy Rick here. <laughs> I'm not a snitch, Randy. Come on. <laughs> I didn't, I don't understand that uh, that argument. I really That's okay. don't. No, okay. not yours. His his the caller. I, I get you. I get you really well. I get you, uh, but I didn't understand him. All right, uh, Donna in Michigan. Hey, Randy. Hi, I'm Donna. A, fri uh, a friend of you for, since you were on Air America years ago. I have a, a friend who lives in New Smyrna Beach. I'm worried for both of you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I am firmly in uh, Elizabeth Warren's camp. And I think that she and Pete Buttigieg would make a great team. And the reason why I like her is I watched the first debates, and she shone. And then I couldn't watch the second ones because I didn't have CNN, but I did listen to 
um, uh, free speech TV all day the following day and got all the headlines. Here's the thing. She can, she's, as far as I'm concerned, the only one that could um, debate Donald Trump and just pound him into the ground. She has a facility of speech that none of the rest of them have. Well, she's a and teacher. I've she, that Joe should stay home. She is a teacher. She absolutely is. And she knows how to uh, explain complex issues and make them simple. And that is a very, very good gift to have. You know, Plus I, she's got humanity. Well, I also I mean, think she, I also she, I also think that the keep it simple, stupid philosophy is, uh, you know, a very, very good one when debating Donald Trump, because he has the intention span of a gnat. OK, right. so the idea that she can take very, very complex issues and make them nice and simple and then throw them back in his face uh, to the point where his his supporters can see the simple issue presented to him and he has no solution for it you know what i mean uh it will cut the bs a little bit but i i gotta say there's going to be a debate on september 12th as you know and because it's only on one night and all 10 i don't know why but for me this is very dumb they could have done they booked the two nights i'm sure the sales department sold over two nights for the ABC debate, but whatever. They're going to have all 10, which means Biden and Warren and Sanders, Buttigieg, all of them will be on the same stage, and Warren and Biden have not been on the same stage together. So it's going to be a very informative evening. But I do want to remind you, because I'm not completely sure we'll be able to broadcast here on Wednesday. So if you see a best of on Free Speech TV, you know we have no electricity here. And you should, you know, call the president and tell him to get on it because you need your Randy, right? But I don't want you to forget the climate town halls that will be on Wednesday night on CNN. Each and every one of the 10 candidates will have their own block of time. So it's not a debate format. It's a town hall format. The the debate on the 12th, that's going to be really important. For Democrats, okay? It's going to show a lot of contrast between all of our candidates, okay? Well, thank you for having a very sane conversation. I appreciate you. Now pray for me.